Good afternoon. Hi, uh, it's Jason Lipfeld. This is the Hostel Student Leadership Academy Friday Ambassador Workshop Series. It's December 9th, 2022, and this is the last workshop of the fall for our 2022. I want to thank you all for being here, uh, and for those of you that will watch this uh, afterwards. Uh, I have the privilege of introducing one of our alumni, a member of the organization uh, for a number of years. Uh, who's graduated and gone on to do some extraordinary things. And he has a wonderful workshop prepared for you today. And without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Golva Saravara Santos. Thank you, Jason. Well, my name is Golvis Tavares. I have a, a bachelor's degree in computer science. I am, as Jason said, I'm hostess alumni. Um, well, I was attend the hostels was part of the Leadership Academy um, and the host of student government. I am the CEO and founder of Kansaka LLC, an information technology company. We provide IT support and, and software development and data analytics and cybersecurity services. Um, this presentation, I developed it because I saw there was a need that people, a lot of people get a scam but don't talk about it. And I thought that Students are a very vulnerable population, um, and I'm just here to share my knowledge. Um, this is cybersecurity for college students, like cyber protection. Do you know that one in 10 US adults becomes a victim of a scam or fraud every year? In 2021, the Internet Complaint, Complaint um, Crime Complaint Center received a record number of complaints from the American public. Over 800,000 complaints, which was a 7% increase from 2020, with potential losses exceeding 6.9 billion among the 2021 complaints received, ransomware, business email compromise schemes, and the criminal use of cryptocurrency are among the top incidents reported. Today, we're going to go through several topics, which include um, ways cyber criminals attack and prey on victims. We will discuss methods they use to get information, which includes social engineering. We will discuss how to navigate the web safely and how to identify employment scams. The learning objectives are simple. I am going to help you understand different types of common cyber attacks help you protect yourself from being victimized online, help you minimize losses if you are compromised. Okay. There's a little um, pre-class survey that I would like for each one to, to do. Them to complete, you can access it by clicking on the link in the chat, which is located on the right side of, the, of your screen. Um, if you cannot see it, let me know. Maybe we can figure it out. It should be quick though. It's two two minutes on that. And if you have any trouble accessing the link, you know, do not worry about it. All right, let's move on. First, we're wondering, what is social engineering? Social engineering is defined as the use of deception to manipulate individuals into divulging confidential or personal information that may be used for fraudulent purposes. Social engineering attacks are a blend of human naiveness and trained con men. 
the art of cunning people to have access to data, money, or sensitive information can be done on many different scales, from advanced hackers to people who know the very basics of our computers. The con artist or cyber criminal takes advantage of the fact that they never have to meet their victims face to face. The objectives of social engineers is to get a victim to give up username and passwords, send out money via electronic fund transfer, money order cryptocurrency or gift cards, install viruses on your device, authorize a malicious software extension or third-party app, act as a money mule for laundering and transferring illicit funds, open a bank or trading exchange account under your name, and lastly, apply for credit cards and loans. <clears throat> I'm going to give a brief description of the types of social engineering. The first one is phishing. Phishing is a prevalent form of social engineering attack. Phishing scams are text, are email text messages and phone, phone call campaigns that create a feeling of urgency interest or panic in victims. The victim may reveal sensitive information, click on malicious websites, or open attachments that contain malware. Now, pretexting. Pretexting is when an attacker acquires information through cleverly crafted lies. The scam is regularly begun by a cyber criminal pretending to need sensitive information from a victim to perform a critical task the attacker generally begins by creating trust with their victim, by impersonating their friend, um, your co-workers, the police or bank and tax officials, or other persons with a right to know authority. A cyber criminal asks questions supposedly required to confirm a victim's identity through which they have gathered essential personal data. All sorts of relevant data and records are collected through using the scam. Data includes social security numbers, personal um, addresses, phone numbers, and bank records. Then we have Roman scams or honey traps. Several criminals pose as interested romantic partners through dating apps, websites to capitalize on their victims' desire to find companions. In a honey trap, the perpetrator pretends to be romantically interested in the victim and lures them into an online relationship. The attacker then persuades the victim to reveal confidential information or pay them large sums of money, but this person may not even be who they claim to be. Then we have scareware. Scareware is a form of malware that uses social engineering to cause shock, anxiety, or the perception of a threat in order to manipulate users into buying unwanted software. We have tech support scams, which are an advanced, a semi-advanced form of social engineering designed to make you think your computer is infected with malware. The scam starts when you you know you learn on a malicious website, and there is some indication um, that your computer is infected. It is common for there to be a pop-up that says your computer is infected, and direct you to contact their tech support. They often ask you to pay. Um, to fix your computer or your computer, you, you will never be able to access your computer or outright they lock your computer once you give them access and they want you to pay using why to borrow them money, um, putting money on a gift card, prepaid card or using a money transfer app because they know those type of payments can be hard to reverse. Now we have baiting. Baiting Attacks use a false promise to pick a victim's greed or curiosity. Several criminals entice users into a trap that steals their personal information or infects their computers with malware. The most common form of baiting relies on physical media to disperse malware to infect your computer. For example, a cyber criminal dropped a malware infected USB flash drive or CD in likely to see places such as bathrooms, supermarkets, elevators. Once the physical media is inserted in your computer, malware may be installed. Another example is when someone on the street is selling or giving out CDs that they claim that has music in or other media in it, but it actually contains malware. Phishing. 
is the as I was saying before is the most common type that features social engineering. Phishing and scams are email, text messages, calls, or other meetings for con off contact that pretend to be something they are not. Together, seeking to undertake an action they normally would not. Here's an example. Um, the target receives a spam email spoofed to look like it was sent by a company that you trust or, or any organization that you trust, um, like Apple, Amazon, in this case is FedEx or some other well-known company. This email includes a link to a phishing site, the update the address that looks like the official website. The target is then prompted to enter their username and password or all their sensitive information, then the scammer collects this information. That's, you know, phishing emails are scams over email. Um, and they are the most common and widely known form of phishing. This attack is an attempt to steal sensitive information via email. Um, a way to, and this is actually, this is not a targeted attack. This is uh, in, conducted on massive scale. A way to identify malicious emails is by looking at the sender's um, email address, which doesn't match the domain, the company they claim to represent. For example, emails from PayPal should come from, pay, from example, at PayPal.com. Emails from Microsoft should come from Microsoft at Microsoft.com. Another giveaway is if the sender doesn't seem to know who you are. Legitimate emails will identify you in a very obscure way. <clears throat> They would use generic salutations like customer or friend. Here's a few um, examples of what phishing emails may look like. Here we have an email that claims to be from Bank of America, but when you read the actual address, it's Bank of Americans. And they, they say they are online banking customer. Those are a few red flags that should definitely, you know, say your alerts. Another one, it's allegedly from Chase, same thing where they are addressing you, they are sending you an email from Comcast.net, definitely not Chase. Um, the alert usually will inform you of a policy violation or fraud alert or unauthorized charges requiring immediate attention on your part. That's what they're trying to do. And we have text message phishing or SMS phishing. Smishing is a kind of phishing that happens over your smartphone tablet or smartwatch. Victims typically receive a text message from an unknown sender informing them of some special offer or contest they have won or that their bank account has been compromised. This text includes a link to a spoof site designed to harvest your login credentials. Voice phishing, commonly known as scam calls, is the use of telephone um, to conduct phishing attacks. Here are some examples. Now, you might be able to spot these as apparent scams, but being alert, the phishing attacks may sound very legitimate. Received a phone call from our department is to inform you that there are some legal enforcement actions filed on your social security number for fraudulent activities. So when you get this message, kindly call back at the earliest possible on our number before we begin with the legal proceedings that is 719-29. Just to confirm, are you guys able to hear that, right? Anyone? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. just wanted to confirm. Thank you. Final courtesy call before your warranty expires and your coverage is voided. This would make you financially responsible for all service repairs. Press 1 now if you wish to extend or reinstate your car's warranty. Once again, press 1 now. Or press 2 to be placed on the do not call list. Or HAR 800. You know, as I said before, these you know, sound like an apparent scam. The reason why they work is because they are sent massively. And this will apply to somebody. There's one person who this will apply to, and they will call the number and they eventually get scammed. Um, you know, some robocalls can be considered legal under certain circumstances. However, many are illegal because they involve some ploy to steal a victim's money, 
user credentials and or identity. A spear phishing. Spear phishing is a personalized attack. The cyber criminal has chosen you specifically and customizes their message based on your personal characteristics. A spear phishing requires so much more effort on behalf of the perpetrator and may take weeks and months to pull off. Therefore, they're much harder to detect and have better suspect rates if done skillfully. Spear phishing scenario may involve an attacker who emails, calls, or texts you that your children, grandchildren, sibling, or partner um, have been arrested and you need to send money for bail. Um, they may also say that you cannot call them because they're in jail. Um, and uh, if you call, it will make everything worse and that you mu must act right now. Now, another example is when a cyber criminal may try to impersonate your family member, friend, or colleague, um, organization you do business with, thereby deceiving the recipient into thinking the um, message so authentic. The message prompts recipients to send money, gift cards, or to send them your bank or other financial logins credentials. Scareware. Scareware bombards victims with a false alarms and fictitious threats. Users are misled into thinking their system is infected with malware, prompting them to install software that has no real benefits besides being malware itself. A typical scareware example is the legitimate looking pop-up banner that appears in your browser while surfing the web, displaying text as, such as your computer may be infected with harmful spyware programs. It either offers to install the tool or directs you to a website where your computer may become infected. Scareware can be distributed by spam email that gives out you know, false warnings or makes offers for users to buy worthless harmful services. Also be aware of free to download software that claims to make your computer faster or clear any viruses. Here are some examples of um, fake scareware or anti malware solutions, spy sheriff, uh, PC protector, be aware, driver cleaner, et cetera. So, is that um, the conventional scareware types, pop ups? Um, they have malicious advertising, which is when the scammers use third party ad streamers to display fake or malicious ads on websites. So, be aware. Um, of clicking ads on applications or websites. We have free goody downloads um, and installations. The hackers and scammers lure victims in by offering what it seems to be free to download software, music, images, videos, PDFs of articles, or books. And they may have uh, malware inside of them. As you can see, like a little pop up warning. And you have this websites are fake. Then we have in infected websites itself. The criminals main website that captured user attention. And when the user visits such sites, the scareware pops up, taking the whole screen. You know, if that ever happens to you, you could always um, just reset your computer or exit out if you can, if they block you from exiting. Sim swapping. Um, this, before we keep going, does anyone have a question? No? Okay. Sim swap, um, a sim swap attack or sim hijacking is where an attacker tricks a telecom service provider into transferring a customer's phone number from the customer's sim card to the attacker's sim card. Sim swap fraud allows scammers to get access to your accounts such as your bank account. Scammer enters your username and password on the, on the bank's website. To validate the login attempt, the bank will send a two-factor authentication code to your smartphone, a code that you then have to enter to access your online account. After a swim swap, the code now goes to the smartphone or other device possessed by the scammer. They can use that to um, enter your bank account. This could also happen with you being asked to give authorization or transfer a phone number to another device. 
Now, there are some tips to protect yourself from SIM swap, um, protect your PIN, prevent cyber criminals from finding out your telecom PIN. Your PIN for your telecom should be different from your banks. Um, protect yourself. Protect your personal information. Be careful where you share your identity information, like telecom, account number, PIN, and zip code. Do uh, no authorizations whatsoever. Do not give authorization to others to have access to your phone accounts or transfer your number to a new device. You know, lately telecom companies have made it harder to switch or transfer your phone number to other providers. However, there's some valuable tips um, that may help in protecting you. You know, these are nine tips for safe browsing. Make sure that the your the site URL that you're visiting is secure by looking at the address bar of the URL um, here. Um, and that has the HTTPS colon slash two forward slash www. Um, or also that has the lock in the lock icon in it as well. No, this doesn't ensure the scam. The site is not a scam. However, demonstrate the site owner is using secure encryption process to transfer data and shield itself from hackers. If the site is unsecure, be cautious because your information it is not secure. Um, do not enter any personal information as it can be compromised. You can also check the site certificate by clicking on the lock icon. Um, but again, this does not mean that the site is actually safe. Cyber criminals often create domain names that are similar to other popular sites to the users into thinking they are on legit sites. Examples, you know, include the New York Times.com or City with two T's, um, or other slight alterations that you likely won't notice. This may be obvious to you, but you may type it incorrectly and not even realize that constantly double check the address bar to see if you have been redirected to a website that is not legitimate. <clears throat> look up the domain age. Um, when you look at the domain age, it allows you to verify how old the site is. Um, it helps you provide with com provide you with confidence that the site has been in business for established amount of time. Um, scam and fake websites usually have a short lifespan as they're rooted out early and shut down by legitimate business owners. Um, you can validate the site with um, Barstotal, which allows you to paste the URL of the site um, and it gives you a report on the trustworthiness of the website. You can also check out the Google Safe um, Browsing Transparency Report. Again, um, note that this, be, this that just because the report comes back positive, it does not mean that the website is safe. Be vigilant. This is just a tool that you can use, but it's in no way an absolute. Uh, watch out for poor grammar and spelling. If their website has a lot of typos, awful and unusual grammar, and it feels like it was translated with Google Translate, there's a good chance it is a scam. Real company websites will have a professional look site. So you can see there are multiple red flags here, like the name doesn't match. Um, there's multiple spelling errors. Verify the contact page. Review the choice for contacting the company. If you don't see multiple options, phone, email, live chat, or physical address, then proceed with caution. Um, look up the physical address. It should be a business location or a residence. Um, contact is usually in the bottom of the page. If the cell is unbelievable, uh, it would be better for you to just walk away from it. You know, even though it's prevalent, 
the for merchants to offer large sales on items to move inventory or promote a new product or service. If you find a sale, a site that has an unbelievable sale, then think twice before continuing. If it's too good to be true, then it probably isn't legit. Another giveaway is that the sale usually has a countdown um, with a short period of time to take advantage of the sale. There's a theme with these social engineering techniques. They prey on emotion, fear, and excitement to make it that you have a little time to act, so you make an irrational decision. Check out Google reviews, um, Charles Pilot, Fake Spot, and the Best Business Bureau to find out more about the businesses. Checking online reviews is, you know, always always good because yeah, simple online search can reveal a lot of, about the company. Um, there's red flags. <clears throat> Look at the number of their re or and quality of their reviews, how recent the reviews are, and if you see their responses from the company itself. You know, all almost all real businesses have some social media activity. If there is no social media activity presence, it is a red flag. See if you can find real employees in the, of the company on LinkedIn. Um, and all those tips, like none of these tips are going to be determinate, but they are, may give you a sense of that something is a scam. And here we're gonna go over fake website to see there's no formatting. All the formatting is like all different. Um, so, so, you know, you always go around and see the, when you add to the car, it's too simple. There's like no taxes. Then always check the about us section. And the most important thing is, you know, Google the location. Where are they located? This is a massive red flag. It's like a home in the Bronx. And when I initially made this video, this was, it was only a month. The website was only up for a month or less. So, by itself is a massive red flag. <clears throat> and then this is another website. And terms and conditions, not doesn't make any sense. Um, massive red flag, you'll see in minutes. It's a hundred dollars for a pizza oven. It's like that should tell you, and then they only take PayPal. Massive red flag right there. And all the items are $99. So that itself should keep you away. All right. Banking in there of the internet. In the recent years, you may have her of our scams involving cryptocurrency, wires, sale, or third party apps. Apps such as Cash App have gotten a bad reputation due to the number of scammers who favor it. Now, we will go over some tips which can help you avoid cyber criminals. But before that, does anybody have a question? I think they're in shock silence, Colvis. <laughs> All righty. Let's keep going. First one, um, banks will know ask for money transfers. Like they will know banks and bank employees and other financial institutions will never ask you to transfer money to yourself to resolve fraud. Never share the one-time passcodes or credentials. Um with anyone, 
bank employees or other financial institutions will never ask you to share the one-time passport or username with the specialist. Um, be careful when sending money. It is crucial to verify who the recipient is before sending money. Oh, sorry. As you may not be able to get um, your money back if you accidentally send it to the wrong person. When sending money to a registered user would sell um, from your bank account, you can see who uh, whose account is registered, whose name and account number, like the email, the phone number on the other end. Always confirm the recipient is whom they say they are before you send any money. Importantly, know whom you're talking to. So we're saying never offer information, especially personal information or account information to someone who calls you directly. Even if they say they're from your bank or the government, don't trust them. You can always verify you're speaking with a bank employee or got the government by just calling them directly. Um, if it's your bank, you always call them by looking at, your, at the back of your credit card or debit card or even on your bank statement. Um, take a moment. Um, several criminals will try to make the situation full urgent. As we've been discussing, this is urgency. It's like right now. So they want you to react and give them what they want before you realize what's happening. If you're told to take action right away, it is most likely a scam. Think about what they're asking for. Confirm they are who they say they are. And the redundant, but keep your information private. Bank employees will never reach out to ask you for sensitive information, like directly. Um, date of birth, social security numbers, mother's maiden name, account numbers, or debit card numbers, debit card expiration, or even the PIN. Um, touching, base, touching base on what we learned before the phishing, many banking scams are done over SMS. Um, legitimate banks typically will email or send you an SMS saying that something is wrong. However, they do not include links within those messages. Um, always check by using your bank mobile application directly or by calling the bank phone number on the back of your credit card, as we discussed before, or even just go to the branch in person, go to the official website, but never trust these links. Um, all right, we're gonna talk about recruitment scams. First, you're probably wondering, what is recruitment fraud? Recruitment fraud is a sophisticated scam offering fictitious job opportunities. These can be solicited when you apply or through unsolicited emails, text messages, and phone calls claiming to be from a company. Um, so as I said before, this, this type of fraud can be perpetrated through online services, such as employment websites where you yourself submit job applications. So be, be aware of Jobs within LinkedIn, um, Indeed, Upwork, Care.com, or other any employ of the employment websites. Um, the emails and phone calls usually request you to provide personal information, um, and ultimately they want like payment to to process the application for jobs that do not exist. Um, they might send you a check for work with, for equipment wages or anything else. Um, and the amount of the check is normally very high. And they may even ask you to reimburse them and want to send the money, the check that do the positive into your account bounces, and then you have been a scam. Or they might use social engineering for you to put your own font up front to purchase items um, on their website in order to harvest your login credentials uh, for your um, bank or for your credit and debit card information. Now, how to identify recruitment fraud. So a criminal will 
often ask you to complete bogus recruitment documentation, such as ap application forms, um, terms and conditions of employment, visa forms, usually like this, they might be using even logos of the company without any authorization. They will request personal information like right away. They want to get all your details like in the first email that they sent you. That's a massive red flag. They will tell you to contact somebody else, so, um, such as a lawyer, a bank, a travel agency, a career company, a visa, immigration processing agencies, et cetera. Um, they will normally use a email correspondence that it's like free, such as Gmail, Yahoo, um, Hotmail, Outlook. They may even offer to pay, a, like they may even ask you to pay, they will offer to pay a large percentage of the fee um, and for you to pay the remainder. They are gonna help you out. That's how they get you. And there's an, a very like an insistency and an urgency. Um, the compensation seems, seems like very high. And as I said, you know, they want the process to occur very quickly. These are a few examples that actually sent to me. So you can see like this, I was said, we, we talked before about the obscure ways that they try to talk to you, um, to seeker. You now this, this might be apparent scams, but they could also look very legitimate. There's a video here. Give me one second. The video didn't load for some reason. Give me one second. I'm three on your side's Gary Harper, and I've exposed the so-called job scam before, but I've come across a similar scam where the scammer actually hacks into somebody else's email and then targets you. Brianna Paredes wanted to experience life away from her Phoenix home, so she enrolled at Marquette University, way up in Wisconsin. It's nice. Um, I really like the campus, too. It's downtown and it's like the heart of Milwaukee. There's a lot of restaurants, a lot of museums. But like a lot of college students, Brianna is back in Phoenix for the summer and needs a part-time job. That's the very reason she jumped online and started searching job recruiting sites, and it didn't take long before she was contacted from someone who appeared to be from her university because of the email address. I looked up some jobs and then I received an email and I looked at the email. I usually click the email to check who it's from, and it was from a professor, I'm guessing. In the email, the person wrote they needed a personal assistant, and the pay wasn't bad, about 400 bucks a week. They said that I would do, like, receive mail for them and pay, like, bills for them and, like, send some books to the bookstore and stuff like that. Brianna accepted the job, and once she did, she received a check, and the amount shocked her. $3,550. That $3,550 check appeared to be legitimate. It even had a hologram. Brianna followed instructions by depositing the check into her personal bank account, and then forwarded $3,100 to a so-called bookstore. She was also told to keep $400 for herself as payment. Then I was like, okay, that's kind of sketchy, you know. But this authentic-looking check turned out to be fake. Brianna's bank told her it was bogus, but by that time, she had already forwarded the money to the scammer, and all $3,500 was drained from Brianna's bank account. 
That's very stressful, actually, because I have to like pay my school bills and stuff. Unfortunately, Brianna had fallen for something called the job scam. In an email to three on her side, Marquette University says they are aware of the issue and that the scam affected a handful of accounts on campus when someone hacked their computer system and posed as a university employee. The university went on to say that they quickly secured the compromised email account and was able to delete all scam emails from the server. As for Brianna, the so-called job scam has been a costly lesson. It's very sad, but it's very eye-opening. It's lesson learned for sure. <laughs> this is a good reminder. If you ever receive a check and you're told to deposit the money and then forward on some of that money, you're most likely getting yourself involved in a scam. Be careful. I'm Gary Harper, three on your side. All righty. Does anybody have a question about the video? Before we continue? No, but I'll just say that, like, even like scrolling through, like, I'm very like involved in tech Twitter, and I was seeing that there's a lot of um, job scans on LinkedIn as well in the tech industry. Yep, it's a big industry. Scamming mm -hmm. is a big industry. Yeah, sadly, we are going to scope, discuss multiple ways. You know, you can have a better defense against cyber criminals. You know, use multi-factor authentication, just a protocol requiring two or more forms of authentication for you to log, log into your online accounts. And this is very important. Do not reuse passwords across multiple accounts or share credentials with anyone. Now, be aware of fake sites, apps, and software as cyber criminals may trick you into downloading replicas of popular sites instead of the legitimate ones. They never feel any pressure to get information to anyone, um, especially over the phone. Um, if you're not expecting to call somebody calls you, to just ignore it. Scammers may use calls, texts, or emails to personal companies or governments like we discussed before. Um, so always you can reach them out directly. Do not send money or personal information to anyone without confirming their identity. Very important, avoid responding to a scam. And I know like I'm one of those who want, if I know a scam, I want to let them know that they're not fooling me and they're wasting their time. But when you answer to them, you're letting them know that your email is valid and that and then they will send you more. Same principle goes to like phone calls and text messages. If you reply, they'll they know that your phone is active. They will send you more. You know, this may be obvious, but do not download suspicious, suspicious emails from attachments. Um, do not click suspicious links within the body of the email. <laughs> Periodically run a virus scan on your computer. Now this may like sound obvious to many of you, but it's always good to have like, a little reminder. Um, however, be aware there's a legitimate antivirus software online. Um, make sure your antivirus is legit, such as you know Ava, Smallwood, Bytes, McAfee, Norton, and Bitdefender. Um, keep your computer up to date because that when you keep your computer up to date, you have the latest um, the latest when you have the computer up to date, you have the latest um Jesus Christ. You have the latest update and it usually has patches for um any bugs or security issues that the app may contain. Okay. You know, be aware of pop-ups. Even though an occasional ad or pop-up can occur in some sites, excessive app content can interfere with your review of the site 
or pushes you to click on links to be redirected to other websites to indicate a scam or unsecure site. Um, truly learn how to spot phishing emails and teach others. Talented cyber criminals spend much time proving um, emails to look like the real thing, but with a little due diligence, you can easily spot the spoofs. Be aware of embedded hyperlinks. Uh, for example, like this one here, you know, they could have unusual URLs because even though it says hyperlinks, then they it has something else actually embedded in it. Um, if you look suspicious, do not click on it. Be aware of emails that look too good to be true. Um, advanced fee scams work because they offer a huge reward in exchange for a little, very little work. But if you take some time, you will realize that the offer is fake or outright illegal. I've said many, many times, you're wary of urgency. Um, use the triple V scam tracker. And there you can find out if like the scam you're being pitched has already been reported. Um, anything that has to do with gift cards is likely a scam. Um, the IRS will not call you or accept payments over the phone. Suspicious messages from family members or friends. Um, if you receive like a message that claims to be your family member or friend or other associates asking you to act right now or for favors, call them directly to confirm. Um, it's usually better to use your credit cards to use online to do online purchases because these charges are easily reversible than debit and, and checks or, or wires. If possible, um, avoid using public Wi-Fi or public computer for banking or other financial transactions. And be skeptical. Be skeptical of every be skeptical of everything as a rule of thumb. Um, do not trust anything online. If you're unsure about something, just better to talk to somebody else. Maybe they'll help you. Um, if you do decide to use multi-factor, I'm sure that many of you already have multi-factor, but just in case somebody doesn't have it, um, you can use Google uh, Authenticator or Microsoft Authenticator. Um, these are a good way that, you know, to prevent um, people from accessing your accounts. Now, what to do if your identity is stolen? You know, identity theft is what happens when somebody sells your identity or personal information to commit fraud. Um, you know, if you believe your identity has been stolen, contact the local authorities to the FTC when information is lost or exposed. All right, let's go through some exercises. But before that, does anybody have a question? No questions, I guess. All right. Please raise your hand um, or let us know in the chat like, if you think well, what's wrong with this. Kobe says typos in the chat. Uh, anybody else? There's more. There's more. There's a well, lot where more. It says the email, where it's from. It says okay. help. Yes. At, like a red flag. Yes. It's a good one. There's more. Anybody else? Looks like it's a lot of money for something, Golvis. I'm not even sure what it's. Yeah, that is it's supposed to be an iMac, oh, but okay. there is actually the math is actually wrong. They actually didn't do the math right. 
Uh, most of if you see, let, let me just get this. If you see the dates are backwards, red flag. There's also Mason LLC instead of Amazon. And that itself is already a red flag to begin with. Amazon LLC. No, that's not and true. All right, let's do the next one. What should you do next if you get this message? Should you reply? Do you click? No. The, the link attachment looks weird. <laughs> yeah, you should not click it. Just delete it right away. What about here? What's wrong with this email? Anybody? No. This is a little harder one. Anybody has? I guess there is something very wrong here. I guess we can't see it, Cole, but you got to tell us. So it's, it says Sun Tust. So we're supposed to be Sun Trust, but it's Sun Tust. It's T U S T. But then here they have the, the allegedly the right one. But if you see the actual email, it's Tust. I'll trust. And they're directing you to right away to just log in. Right. What about here? What should you do next here? Do you call them? Okay, yeah, you close it. What about here? She go to New York State and send them a, you know. <laughs> or New York, New York State sending a text message. You reply, so you go to the link. I would say this goal is anytime I get a text message, I kind of block it, um, yeah. whoever it's from. And if I really feel concerned, I go to whatever the website is that they're saying, like the, the official. I'll go check my um, the New York State website or whatever it is. But generally, when I get something by a text message, I don't respond to it. Well, we're, we're done. Um, thank you for your time. If anybody has a question, please do. Oh, there's somebody I actually had a question. I see here. Are all those personal assistant jobs CM? Usually they are, um, sadly. Because this is basically a job that I don't know undermine it but it's a job that anyone can do so like they focus on those jobs because they're like, oh i could do that you know that's they usually like focus on jobs that anybody can do um and they will target those people anybody else 
I have a question, Golvis. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so sometimes I get emails. This is always a tricky one for me. I get email. You can't see me. What is this? I don't know what's going on with the camera. Okay, here we go. Um, and when I know I've signed up for something, I know I can go there and unsubscribe. But I get a lot of emails where I know I didn't subscribe for it. And so I'm wondering if that's something that it could be a scam because I, I don't mess with them. I just leave them alone. But Yeah, it, it could be a scam. Um, if you don't see any unsubscribe button anywhere, it, it could be a scam. Usually what I personally do when I get those, I just block them, send them to junk. And eventually it stop once you never respond. Kobe has a question. Go ahead. Yeah, actually. So when I'm when I'm connected to like the host host Wi-Fi, Literally every like legit website I try to go to, like it's a legit URL, it's the official website. And it'll be like, this website is not safe, please back out. Or at least like this connection is not safe, it'll say. So I don't know what's that about. Um probably it's a, it's just that how the network is set up. They normally block you. The schools normally will block students from accessing certain websites. Mm -hmm. okay. um yeah normally like when you're school you don't want to like visit any anything really that's not school related well i'll say one thing we we've gotten a lot of those um the job things and some faculty members have actually forwarded them to different people on the campus um and then it has to stop them as far as what kobe's mentioning i think since we went to the um went to a, a system we have to log into the system in order to access to your hostess account i think anytime you're on like the regular wi-fi and just trying to access it it's not going to let you do it you have to log in through the the author was it authorization was it authentication program platform uh-huh yeah so Does anybody else have any more questions? No. Here. Here for you guys. It's Christmas season, you know? Yeah. Or holiday season or yeah, this is, season or your This is a hot food. season. This is a hot season for scammers too. They love these seasons because people are distracted, you know. And you know, make sure you talk to your family because mainly the elderly they get scammed all the time i also have this presentation for the elderly that's why i actually built my the first presentation um because i do it work for a number of seniors and i realized that they get targeted all the time and i decided to build this presentation for that yeah i'm also doing it to you guys and if there's anything, you know, any improvement that you, that you guys could give me, I'll greatly appreciate it. So somebody just sent me in the chat. Yeah, we all do. You know, they're always like trying to get you and just mass, there's mass emails, text messages. Um, so I was saying, I said before, they, they are not targeted. Most of the time they are not. Um, employees usually like have more targeted tags. They're called welling, where they get a supervisor send an email to some um, to their uh, low level analyst to the junior, um, and they get told oh, by this, and that's the way that they scam a lot, a lot of companies. There's also um companies you know you're you have a small operation and you get ransomware you see them every day happening more and more often where companies get ransom um and if they don't have a robust um it infrastructure they usually pay up because um they lose all their files and if they yeah if they don't pay they usually just get destroyed 
because of your accounting department that's compromised forget about it Jason, what happened? I think I got hacked. <laughs> uh, no, I'm somehow my computer froze. So I'm now back here on my phone. Um, let's see. It doesn't look like I'm getting control back over there. Uh, so I don't even know what's going on. So I'm gonna let that, that do it. No, I think I think the, the presentation was really good, Golvis. Thank you. Um, okay. And, and really important because obviously this time of year and everything that's going on, but also I think it is about community and alerting people to different things that are going on. Yeah. Because, you know, the one thing that we always hear about, we have a lot of people who are first generation here at the, you know, and getting a college education. So you guys are all super smart. I'm not saying that the people around you are not, but they're less, they have less experience with these type of things. Some, some older folks, some folks who have not had practice with computers or the electronic devices that we carry around in our hands all the time. Uh, we take for granted how skilled we are at that. And so sharing that information with, with, your peop, with your family members, with your friends is really important because it, it, it's treacherous. I mean, you showed, you, yeah, you showed some things today that I was not familiar with. A lot of the stuff I was just because because I've kept the same phone number for like 20 years. And <laughs> yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll definitely get something like that. And I give it out to everybody or that, you know, we use all of I try to communicate with everybody through the personal emails uh, in our group. I get tons of stuff, both at Hostos and, and personally uh, with Hostos. I just I, we have a system in place where you can just report to spam. So if you get if you get emails to your hostess account, you can forward it to report spam and they can block it out. Mm -hmm. um, and then for, for text messages, you know, like I said before, I, the moment I see it, <laughs> it's like, okay, even, you know, even if it's a company that I've been working with for 10 years, that's like, I'm not, I'll go and I'll go and find their website and go in there. Mm -hmm. um, it's always it. better. It's always better. Yeah. Just, just go to the source. And banking, of course, whenever it comes to money, I think that's probably the most important thing. It, Never give out your credentials by, by accident, right? Um, I even I actually got flagged earlier this year at Hostos because I am I not on camera now? What happened? Oh, you're on the camera. We we'll see you. Okay. All right. It's I'm having tech issues all semester long. It was good today for some reason. I got tech issues. Um, no, I got red flagged by the Central University because we got an email from a student uh, that identified things about that were going on at the college. Uh, I didn't know the student personally, but because students do reach out to me on a regular basis, I responded to it. And I think that, that it got everything, it lit up everything in the system. I had to reset all my passwords and everything. Uh, and that's the scarier version, right? You want to be like, uh, able to communicate with with people who are in need and have real questions and seem to have like yep. a real and but sometimes you can't you won't be able to predict it i mean i didn't give out any information just i answered the question and so it lit yeah, it up it's, it's very sad that we live in that's the world we live today and sadly i think it's just gonna get worse every day just gets worse So does anybody you know, have any other? Yeah, go ahead, go. No, I was gonna say, you know, even though you guys may know a lot of it, it's always good. The reinforcement is always good because, as I said before, it's urgency. They will, you know, get you on your maybe even on your lowest. You're not even thinking, and you just do it, and then you realize that oh my god, what did I just do? Just a little reminder, of, you know, me going over the presentation. To help you down the line one day, at least I hope. Anybody else have any questions for Golvis?
No, I guess not. There's three J's on left field here. <laughs> uh, it is a, you're muted. Layton, did you have a question? <clears throat> no, no questions. No questions. Okay. All right. So I'm I'm having tech issues here. I just tried to log in. I could see you guys <laughs> in multiple places. Um, I don't know if I guess you guys can see me. You can see this weird lighting background. Um, so and and I can see me, but that's the weirdest thing is that I can see me in my own lighting background, but I can't get back into my Zoom on the computer for some reason. So uh, first of all, I want to thank you both for being here today. I appreciate it. I looked over the, the program earlier this year. I thought it would be a good way um, for us to end the semester. I'm glad they can make some time for us. Um, we, we appreciate you. And obviously, you're always uh, welcome back as a member of our organization. Uh, we value you. Um, you. And I wish you great success. And of course, you have a baby and a wife and all that good stuff. Thank so. you. Yes. Take care of everybody. So however you can like do your applause, virtual, real, anything like that, please do. And I'm still like weirded out by the fact that I'm looking at this um, <laughs> without the hostess background. Uh, so and then the other thing I want to mention to everybody, thank you all for being here for the fall semester workshops. What's really important is I sent out a survey earlier last week, but a more specific one this week. In order for us to continue to do the work that we do and really sort of address the desires and needs of the members of the group, uh, I need you guys, all, ladies and gentlemen, to fill out that survey. Uh, it's going to take about maybe five to seven minutes. Uh, it's pretty quick. You just go through, you click on the workshops that you attended and just evaluate them uh, and evaluate the presenter. And this way we can uh, evaluate what we've been doing and figure out what's working and what needs to you know, need to be enhanced, who we can bring in, who we should bring back and all that other good stuff. And it's also a way for me to be able to get you guys your certificates. So we give out certificates for the fall and then the winter and then the spring uh, for each of the different series that we do. So please take some time out. I'll, I'll send a couple of reminders next week um, and you guys can uh, definitely uh, fill that out. And then there, I'm going to attach some prizes to that. I'll give you more information on that next week. Uh, but you know, once you fill out the survey, you're going to be uh, entered into whatever it is that we have. And then there's one for the film series. And then, of course, there's one for volunteering. A lot of you have been volunteering over the last couple of days. And I appreciate that. And I hope you will register your volunteer hours because we do report them to the city um, as volunteer hours for our group. And the final thing is we do have a couple more volunteer things coming up in the next couple of weeks. I hope you'll join us uh, when we work with the Family Empowerment Program to give out some gifts uh, next week. And then we'll have some other things as we move on. And then as we get into January, I'm gonna send everybody the list of workshops for January, the second week in January, which is what I really call our winter workshop series. Everybody's invited from our group, and we're also going to invite people from across the university and across our campus to participate in those workshops with all brand new speakers, uh, eight speakers over four days. And we will have a big volunteer service activity uh, connected to Martin Luther King Day, uh, connected to those workshops. So we'll be, I think we'll be working with the New York Common Pantry uh, either on Martin Luther King Day or around Martin Luther King Day uh, because they may already have have volunteers for it. I'm working with them on that. So I hope you'll join us for that. And if we, we don't see you uh, in the near future, good luck on all your finals. Um, good luck with all of your classes. I hope your grades are, are great. And uh, come and see me in the office if you like before we go on break. And happy holidays to everybody who uh, will be celebrating holidays. And good break to everybody who's going to have a chance to sort of relax and, and not be taking classes over a couple of weeks here um during the holidays but watch out for scammers yes um please if, in that survey that with jason please if you have any suggestion for my presentation please set, just write it there i would greatly appreciate it so i'm trying you know sp spread the word and 
share my knowledge with as many people as possible. Thank you, Brian, for your kind words. I really appreciate that. And Golvis, when he was at the college, was already like doing some, he had some ideas. He got us to do like a whole um, a workshop where we brought in people from, from local community to talk about uh, some issues and some concerns. So um, this is kind of something that he, he, pre, he is doing and wants to part, be part of his uh, portfolio. So as he said, any advice that you can give to one of your former members as they pursue their careers, I think is invaluable. Um, so, so if you can, when you do the survey, please, please put that out. And now I would like to say goodbye to everybody like I normally do, but this is just going to be impossible because I have, <laughs> I'm scrolling on my phone. So uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, oh, I look at the names. That'll make it easier. So I want to thank you all for being here. I want to wish you a great weekend. I look forward to seeing you in a couple of days here. Annie, thank you. Adama, Armani, Ashanti, uh, Bridget, Brian, Chris, Elizabeth, Erica, Fatima, Francine, Isabel, uh, Jessica, Joseph, Kobe, Leighton, Sashi, Sabrina, and there were a bunch of other people here earlier uh, who stepped out. Uh, I want to thank you again for your support of the Host of Student Leadership Academy. I want to thank you for your service to this community uh, as representatives of the Host of Student Leadership Academy. And Golvis, uh, you know you're always welcome back. I look forward to seeing you. Wish you happy holidays and please stay in touch. And everybody, uh, I will see you soon, probably in person. So we'll talk later. Uh, have a great weekend. Thank you. Happy Thank Friday, you so Brian. Thank you. Happy, happy Friday. Friday. Happy, happy Friday. Bye. Everybody, have a good weekend. Bye, good everybody. You, good this is you too, Brian. Bye. Take care. All right. Bye, Jason. All right, guys. Happy Friday.